the ASA Brain Health Initiative. What is it? What do you need to know? To find out, I'm joined now by Dr. Daniel Cole and also Dr. Lee Fleischer. Thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen. This is uh, a, a very important issue. Dr. Cole, perhaps we could start with you and uh, tell us a little bit about the initiative and what it's all about. Well, first, thank you for this opportunity to talk about this important initiative. Uh, the Brain Health Initiative represents a commitment by the ASA and physician anesthesiologists to improve the health of the public and our uh, patients. Uh, it is a patient safety initiative specifically targeted on something called post-operative delirium or an acute confusional state that occurs with relative frequency after surgery uh, and procedures. Just to give you a size and a scope uh, of the problem, uh, post-operative delirium can occur in up to 70% of patients depending upon the surgery and their uh, comorbid uh, state. Uh, it is a $150 billion problem in the United States and leads to a cascade of complications and even death. What's more important is that it's been estimated that 40% of the cases can actually be prevented and the ASA is here to make sure that we give the best care available to our patients and disseminate this across all of the stakeholders within medicine and external to medicine to make sure that this ultimately occurs zero percent of the time. That's a stretch goal, but that's where we like to be. Well, Dr. Fleischer, to that end, uh, what uh, medical organizations and advocacy groups have, uh, have joined in on this initiative? Uh, well, as we began this, uh, and delirium is one aspect, and, and then I actually, the other aspect is cognitive changes and memory changes and the ability to think clearly after surgery is something that we want to make the public aware of and prepare them, particularly if you have mild cognitive impairment. Uh, so we went out and reached out to people like, first, the American College of Surgeons, probably our key stakeholder, the American Geriatric Society, the orthopedic surgical societies. We then went and looked at who are the public advocacy groups and the Alzheimer's Association and probably our other key stakeholder is AARP since they really are the group that is incredibly interested and have a brain health initiative themselves. Uh, and then we went to funders like Medicare, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, the health insurance plans, AHIP, as well as finally funders like the NIH and the CURI. So it's really a multi-stakeholder group that we've approached. So gentlemen, what, what key areas or questions does the Brain Health Initiative address? So there really are three key questions or three key stakeholders that we want to go out to. The first is what should we say to the patient? The second is what should we say to the providers? And the third is what should we say to the funders of the research community? So with respect to question one, should the public be informed that they're at risk for delirium, as Dr. Cole suggested, and they're at risk, especially if they have what we would call the vulnerable brain, or someone is having some minor memory changes, for having these problems postoperatively? And secondly, should it be part of the consent? That's sort of the public-facing campaign. The answer is we do believe the public should be aware. ARP is very interested in partnering with the ASA on this. As far as consent, we really don't believe that that's an issue that really it should be included today. The second part is really educating patients on what they should know, what they can do to improve their brain health, and actually what they might uh, bring to the hospital to make sure they're more oriented when they actually come to the hospital. So that's really the key first part. The second area that we really want to focus on is providers. There are specialty groups, the geriatric society, the, the surgeons, who have produced guidelines around delirium. We know, and, and maybe Dan can comment, we know more of what we don't know or shouldn't do than what we actually should do. Yeah, I would, I would totally agree with that. I think that brings up a good point in that we understand the size of the problem and the impact, how devastating it can be in our patients' lives. What we don't totally understand, and we do understand some things to do, some things not to do, but we don't even totally understand how it occurs. And so one of the important other thrusts of this project is to try and get uh, coordinated research efforts together so that we have a better understanding of this uh, public health problem. Now I know there's a discussion also about a, essentially a toolbox, uh, I believe is the term being used for, for providers. Right. 
So we're hoping with AARP and other publicly facing groups to say for the patients, here's a toolbox of questions you can bring. Does your hospital think about your brain health? Do they actually, are they prepared uh, to reduce any risk of, deliver, uh, of delirium? Are they prepared to make sure that certain drugs that put you at higher risk are not given to the elderly unless absolutely necessary? So, in fact, the second toolbox that the ASA is going to be working on is what the ASA members should do to make sure their hospital is ready. So that when the public comes and says, are you prepared to improve our brain health? We say, yes, we're totally engaged. In fact, the anesthesia department, the anesthesiology department, actually has an entire protocol to make sure we minimize that. The stretch goal of zero, but at least today, as low as possible. Well, we're at a baseline now, if you will, and moving forward, give us some ideas about what you would like to do next, and I guess that ties into what you would like the members to do as well. I, I think that the key is really to stay tuned, but they can look at their own order sets. Their, uh, what happens to patients in the recovery room, what happens to elderly patients when they actually get to the floor, and engage their surgical colleagues and potentially the gerontologists at their hospital and say, are we sure that everything that the patient shouldn't get is not given to them? So sort of that's the first best place. And I think also engaging our hospital administrators and asking the question, are there things that patients can do to make them uh, feel more at home and more oriented? Can you bring your children and grandchildren pictures to you when you come to the hospital? It's really we wouldn't think it's in our domain, but I think it's a great way that we can show leadership about thinking about the entire perioperative period, not just what happens in the OR. A final word, Dr. Cole? I think, again, this is a probably a five-year project. It's not going to be a 30-day you know, project where we have a burst of activity, but it's going to be a sustained uh, project that is a, a multi-prong to hit, like uh, Dr. Fleischer said, you know, patients, providers, uh, you know, payers and then the uh, research so that five years from now we will be sitting in a much better place and we'll have uh, helped uh, the public out there with this uh, disease. Gentlemen, thank you so much for this update on the ASA Brain Health Initiative. Dr. Cole, Dr. Fleischer, this is ASA TV.